Hello church. I do hope that I find you well on this day that the Lord has made. Uh, before we get into the word of the day today, I just want us to firstly thank uh, the president for lifting the ban on all churches, allowing uh, the body of Christ to meet in their various uh, buildings, but um, with uh, restricted uh, numbers of 50. Um, but as the movement uh, leadership, uh, what we have resolved to do is to continue holding our services on our Facebook page and of course on our YouTube uh, channel. So we urge you to continue to, to, to view uh, the sermons and of course the weekly updates of Facebook page and the YouTube channel until the environment is conducive for us to, to, to meet again as the church. Without taking much of your time, uh, I'll just want to take you through the Word of God. Uh, firstly, we just want to read from um, uh, the book of uh, 1 Kings 19, from uh, verse 19 to 21. I'll read from the, the King James Version. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed by and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what I have done, for what have I done to thee? Verse 21. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did it. Then he arose and went after Elijah and he ministered unto him. Here we see that Elisha was in the field and the Bible says he was plowing in the field and the Bible says he was on the twelfth kettle. When we look at the number 12, number 12 is a number of perfection, and it is also a number of authority. So Elisha was a man of authority. He was a man who had authority. When he was in the field, Elijah comes and he throws um, uh, his mantle on, uh, uh, on Elisha, and he goes away. And the Bible says, and Elisha immediately left what he was doing, and he went after Elijah. And he says to Elijah, allow me to go back to kiss my father and mother, then I will follow you. Elisha did not only do that. The Bible tells us that he also slaughtered all his cattle and he cooked them with everything and he gave people to eat. What a, a very interesting story that we find there in the Bible. Elisha was faced with his future. But there is one thing that he does before he started going, uh, pursuing his future. He went back and he slaughtered the cattle that he was plowing with. Basically, when we look at that, Elisha was burning down the bridges. Mostly, uh, as human beings, the most things that we, 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 we find difficulty with is our past. We've got a tendency of going back to our past. When you look in the Bible, when you look at the disciples, the men that actually walked with Jesus on earth, they had this problem as well. Uh, when Jesus had departed, they were found fishing. They went back fishing. When you look at Lot's wife, uh, when they were running away from Sodom and Gomorrah, she looked back. Why? Because she was still attached to her past. When you look at the children of Israel, you know, they were, even though God had miraculously delivered them from the land of Egypt, they still thought of Egypt. They still remained attached to the onions of Egypt. So our past is always a danger to us pursuing our future. But here we see Elisha. Elisha dealt with his past. When you study the, the story of Elisha, 
Things, even though he followed Elijah, things were not very easy for him. Many times, you know, Elijah would tell Elisha, you know, that, you know what, me, I am going my way, you go your way. But Elisha would always say, where you go is where I will go. What you eat is what I will eat. Why? Because he had no past to go back to. He had bent the bridges. So my encouragement to you today is that in order for us to go into the future, for I believe the future is lying ahead of us, this season has been a sobering season for all of us where we had to self-introspect where had we had to consider a lot of things uh, concerning our lives. I believe, as Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says, we need to, to, to get rid of the things that weigh us down. I believe we need to get rid of the things that are weighing us down from pursuing our future. What are the things that weigh us down from pursuing our future? Victory itself, your past victory, can weigh you down. Many of us have parked where we, parked, where we last had our victory. For instance, our beloved nation, we have parked where we had our victory 40 years ago. And our past victory is haunting us today because we have not yet moved from 40 years ago. We are still stuck 40 years ago. So your past victory can haunt you. It can stop you from pursuing your future. Your past uh, defeats or shame can also stop you from pursuing your future. So we need to get rid of these things. We need to get rid of the past shame because it is weighing us down. We need to get rid of the past defeats because they are weighing us down. We need to get rid of those things that have frustrated us in the past because those things are weighing us down. You know, people could have, maybe people have hurt you in the past and you are still holding on to that. My friend, I'm here to challenge you today to get rid of those things because they are stopping you from pursuing your future. As I am talking to you right now, I, I just had a picture of an athlete. When it, an athlete is about to run 100 meters, I mean, I was also an athlete at school, what I would do is I would look for the, the clothes that would suit that 100 meters. I would not wear heavy clothing, but I would wear light clothes. Why? Because heavy clothes would weigh me down. They would stop me from running fast to finish the 100 meter race. So likewise, I am encouraging you to put on the light clothing. Get rid of the things that are on you, that are stopping you from fulfilling the race because those things are weighing us down. We have got a great future that is lying ahead of us. COVID-19 is coming to an end, it's coming to pass. It has got no choice but to end. But when it ends, we have got to start, we have got to be found, you know, with, with, without these things that are stopping us from fulfilling our destinies. I hope you were encouraged today by this word. And my, my, my encourage to you is to get rid of these things. Meditate on this word. Begin to think of those things that are weighing you down and get rid of them, them and allow God to lead you, to take you into your future. May God richly bless you. Amen.